Hello everybody, Kirk Nelson here, and welcome back to Practical Brush Effects in Photoshop. This is lesson 1.2, where I just want to quickly go over the tools and resources that you'll need for the projects in this course. First of all, this is a beginner to intermediate level course. I'm expecting that you have some basic knowledge of Photoshop, so you know how to use the interface, how to work with the common features such as layers, selections, and masks. Now I'm using Photoshop CC 2014 that was updated in the spring of 2015. But the projects that I'm showing can still be done in Photoshop as far back as CS6. There are course files that goes along with these projects. And the thing I need to point out is that the projects are cumulative. So the PSD files included in each lesson represent the end state of that lesson. It's my recommendation that you do each project in a single sitting so you can easily work on a single PSD file throughout the course of the project. A large portion of this course is the actual practical effects. I'm hoping the techniques I show you will inspire you to get out of your chair, get away from your screen, and work on some of these real effects for yourself. That's the whole point of this course, but I do realize that not everybody will have the opportunity to do that, or they may not have the equipment needed to create the effects. So I'm also including my raw photography for these effects for you to work with. Now each of the three effects will require their own set of materials. Now I'll go over those at the beginning of each project, but I do have a set of basic photography equipment that I used, and you will need something similar to follow along with the practical projects of the course. You will need a DSLR or some similar type of camera that allows shooting in manual mode and gives control over the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. I do not recommend that you try to use your phone to handle the photography requirements of these projects. You'll also need a tripod or something to hold the camera stable. You'll need a black photographic background or even just a black sheet or curtain to use as a backdrop. I have several of these tripod style light stands that I find absolutely indispensable when working with these types of photo shoots. I use them to hold lights, to hold the backdrop, to hold props, almost anything. They are really useful. Now for lights, I use a very inexpensive solution with these light clamps. I picked these up at the hardware store and the light bulbs that I put in them are the ones that simulate the color of natural light. These are very effective and they're very inexpensive and easy to find. And finally, a simple wooden stool. As humble as it is, it tends to be the perfect thing to hold the items we use to produce these various effects. It's stable, it's solid, it's easy to move around, and because it is so common, if it happens to get a little marked or marred up, it's not really that big of a concern. Okay, I'm sure you're excited to get started on this. Let's start out with chapter number two, where we work on creating some fascinating smoke effects. 